Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel here, Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. Thanks very much for watching today. In today's video, it's another one of these videos where I'm sitting around in the studio just experimenting um, and just playing around with different things and trying out some different things. And I thought, hey, maybe I'll run the camera a little bit and show you what I'm kind of doing today. I've been doing several of these videos in the past, so go check all the archive videos. I've done everything from a experimenting with drum bus compressors to how to beef up uh, your drum sound and, and we're going to continue that a little bit today and so much more so i hope you go check out all the other videos before we get started make sure you like share subscribe and also hit the notification bell and also if this channel helps you in any way consider hitting the thanks button below the video it helps support what i do here and i thank you very much in advance for doing so so what am i doing today well today i was sitting around not just sitting around, I've been asked a couple of times and I recently just upgraded to the um, TuneTrax Easy Drummer 3, which is great, a lot of videos on YouTube. Easy Drummer 3 is head and shoulders above Easy Drummer 2, in my opinion. It's more in line now with the kind of the Superior Drummer line without all the under the hood and all the tweakability that Superior Drummer has. It's more stripped down, but the sounds are really great. And um, uh, I was asked a couple of times uh, in the past, and I wanted to know for myself, you know, um, the drums and the drum sounds coming out of Easy Drummer, the original drums are great. But what is that compared to if I run it through the console and maybe do a little EQ, a little bit of compression, a little bit of panning? How can we dress up some of these software drum sounds? So that's what I'm going to do today. I did some and I figured I'd share it with you. So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully you like that. So here we go. So we're going to come over here to Studio One. And I'll show you how you route out the audio out of Easy Drummer and all of that. So if we come over here to Studio One and we open up Easy Drummer, here's Easy Drummer 3. And basically what I did is I just went uh, into their grooves section and I kind of picked out, you know, a little uh, minute uh, drum groove here with an intro, a chorus, a drum fill, a verse, and that kind of thing. Um, and so we got some great sounds right out of the box. And it just, just looks fantastic. They did a really good job with this. And they've added a bunch of new features to Easy Drummer 3 that's not in Easy Drummer 2. Things like the grid editor um, and bandmate. Um, a lot of these things are things that um, were part of, in, in part, of the superior drummer line. And they brought some of those tools and functionality to Easy Drummer 3. So I highly recommended it. I recommend it. And no, it's not a sponsored video. I paid for my upgrade just like everybody else. But anyway, I picked um, the Easy Drummer Bright Room uh, as my drum set. Um, we have Bright Room, Main Room, and Tight Room. I kind of like the Bright Room. And then over here on the uh, right-hand side next to that, this drop-down box, uh, you'll see it says Original Mix. So you could pick a preset, which has all the all of the presets have EQ, compression, and all kinds of effects on them. So they're kind of already done. So you kind of have a finished drum sound when you get out of Easy Drummer, which is really great for songwriters and such. But they also have this choice called Original Mix, which is just the raw drum sounds, which is what I wanted to use because I wanted to dress it up myself. So I picked the Original Mix. And if I were to just play back this little uh, fill, this little uh, drum track here that I did, here's how what it kind of sounds like. Pretty straightforward. We'll listen to the whole thing in a few minutes here. So if I come over to the mixer, we have our, you know, the way they laid out this mixer in this particular version of Easy Drummer is also better than the prior version. We have all of our three kick drums here, uh, all on one kick. We have our snare top and bottom, hats, all our toms, rides and overheads. And so what I did was after I created this little drum track here, let me close Easy Drummer here for a second. I just originally dragged it onto Studio One, or into, not onto, into Studio One, onto my timeline here. And here is the MIDI data from that. It's, it'll be the same as what you just heard. Right, so there's your basic drum 
track all on one track full of MIDI data, and you can double click on it in Studio One, and you can edit it in the, in the grid here. Or again, you can do it right inside of Easy Drummer 3 on the grid editor, which I kind of like better. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see, but nevertheless. Um, but let's say, and this is part of the video that people have asked me about before. They say, well, how do you output multiple outputs? So in my mixer down here, I, I don't just have it on one track here in purple, I have it on multiple tracks. You'll see the audio here on multiple tracks, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but let's say you wanted to just do this coming out of Easy Drummer and you didn't want to export audio wave files. Well, that's really simple. So what you would do is you come over to your Easy Drummer uh, instrument here and you go to the mixer and you'd come down here to the outputs and you'll see right now everything is routed to output one, two. That's why it's only coming in on that one purple track. But if I come down here and say, okay, let's say my kick in and my is on one, two, we can do the drop down, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so forth. Or you can blend with the mixer right here in Easy Drummer. You can blend the three kick drums together, let's say, and put all three of them on channel one, two. And then maybe your snare top and bottom, you can blend those together and put those on outputs three, four. Same thing with your toms. You can blend all your toms together and put that out on say five, six, or you could put them out as individual. I think you have up to 32 outputs on Easy Drummer 3, which is great. So here's just an example. One, two on the kick in, out three, four on the kick out, out five, six on the kick sub, out seven, eight on the snare top, and then let's just start and we'll go out seven, eight, and we'll go uh, nine, 10. So you can just look at kick and snare. So once you route your outputs, I'll close this for a minute. Now in every DAW is gonna be a little different, but here in Studio One, you don't see it here. You say, well, where are these? These brown tracks or something else we're gonna talk about in a minute. So I don't see it, you may say. Well, in Studio One, what you wanna do is you wanna come down to Instrument, this little tab down here, and you wanna make sure this won't uh, let's see, it'll look like this when you first open it, and you wanna come over to this triangle, drop down, and you wanna go to expand. And then you wanna check the boxes, the outputs. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now you'll see, next to this purple track, you'll see these other tracks. I'll make them all purple, just so it's easier to see. Now, all of these tracks are those tracks that we just talked about. So if I, were, again, were to play this back, So here's your kick out, kick sub. Snare top and bottom. And then you can just go in here and you can just double click and you can rename your tracks. Snare top, snare bottom, so on and so forth. Then you can do all your mixing right here. You can put your inserts and plugins or whatever you want to do in the box. But keep in mind, these are instrument tracks. All we did was route the MIDI data out to its own instrument track. That's all we did, okay? Which is one way to do it. Now you may say, I'll uncheck these and get rid of these for a second so we can clear up the screen a little. You may say, well, that's great, but I don't want to do that. I want audio tracks. I want to make all of my drums audio. How do I do that? Great question, and that's what I did here in Brown. Let me show you how to do that quickly. So if you come up here, the first thing I did is I made sure everything was routed uh, to the outputs, as we said, the proper amount of outputs. And then if you come up to this menu in Easy Drummer 3 called Track, and come all the way down to Bounce, Export Song as Audio Files, you're gonna get this dialog box. And this is gonna say, do you want the full mix to be sent out as a stereo file, or do you want the stems? and then you can check off which ones you want. So now one, two is always gonna be a, uh, an accumulation of all the drums in Easy Drummer. That's the way it works. Outputs one and two are dedicated for the whole mix. So you really, <clears throat> pardon me, wanna start with three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as you see here, three, four would be the kick out, five, six will be the kick sub, seven, eight will be the snare top, nine, 10 will be the snare bottom. You hit export and it's gonna export it to a folder, which I've already done. And if I'll show you this really quick, and this is a basic easy drummer lesson, I have a folder here called Easy Three Drum Stems, and here is all the WAV files for that drum kit. And then you can take that and import that 
onto audio tracks in your DAW, which is what I did right here in brown. So now all of my tracks are here. All of my stems for that drum kit, for that MIDI drum part, which is up here in purple, is now here in audio tracks. And um, what I did was I just did a quick balance, the raw audio, and I, in Studio One, and I exported that as a song file. I did a, I did a two track stereo file, and that's down here in green, okay? So now we're moving on to the point of this video, but I wanted to show you that for Easy Drummer 3 in case you wanted to know, people have asked me about it. So the raw file here in green is just these stems that I exported, blended it in the box, not through the console, made a stereo file. Here is the raw sound of Easy Drummer, which will sound just like what you heard a few minutes ago when I played it back for you in Easy Drummer. Here's the stereo file of that. Okay, sounds great. That's what the drum sounds should sound like. Then I took these brown tracks, the original files, and I routed them out to the SSL. I did a little bit of EQ, hit the preamps, did a little bit of balancing, um, didn't run it through the SSL bus and compressor, did not run it through the SSL fusion. I just wanted to take the raw tracks, use a little bit of EQ. I did the NG bus compressor on the drum bus, the West Audio NG bus compressor, okay? And the West Audio, let me just turn all these down now. The West Audio NG bus compressor is doing about 4 dBb of compression because there's no other compression on the drums. And then I also um, added a little bit of EQ from the API 5500 EQ, and that's it. So what I wanted to show you today was here is in red, that print track after it's gone through the SSL. So I just took the raw tracks coming out of Easy Drummer put it through the SSL, and then printed it back in so we can compare the red track to the green track, the green track being the, um, being the raw audio, the raw easy drummer, the red track being after we dressed it up with the SSL, and after we added some EQ, and as, after we added some drum bus compression and some drum bus EQ. Kabish? That's what we're doing, okay. <laughs> so we'll start off with the easy drummer in green and keep your eye on the solo button. And then I'll just go to the one in red. Just look at the solo button and you'll see it. Here we go. So there you go. So I put all those individual tracks, by the way, onto separate faders. So I have a kick in, kick out, kick sub on the console, snare top, snare bottom, hats, tom one, tom two, floor tom one, floor tom two, a ride, pair of overheads. So there you go. So that's what I was, I was just playing around with that. Cause I said, well, let me see how much I can dress up those easy drummer sounds. Cause the easy drummer sounds are fantastic. But what would it sound like once I put it through and do kind of my regular little processing and just dialing it up? How much better can I make it sound? And I think it sounds considerably better. It's tighter, it's got more presence, it's got more low end in it. It doesn't have that, that kind of mask hollowness kind of sound. And I think it sounds great. So now you could do the same thing with plugins in the box. I've done that before at Home Recording Made Easy, where you could take the original sounds coming out of Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer or Steven Slate 5 or whatever you use, even Logic Drummer or even some of the you know ones in Studio One, and you can bring them into your DAW as raw audio, and you can dress them up with some EQ compression, 
maybe some console emulation plugins, a couple of channel strip plugins, and you can really dress them up and make them sound more modern and make them sound any way you want. So again, I hope this video was helpful to you and you got something out of it, a little Easy Drummer video. It's part of my sit down and experiment for a while series. And again, I've said this in the last couple of videos, I encourage you, all of you, whether you work with just in the box, or whether you work with hardware, or whether you work hybrid, or whether you have a console, whatever tools you have, part of becoming better at what you do, especially when we talk about mixing, but it's the same for recording, uh, but for mixing in particular, because that's what we do here, is really to try to, uh, as much as you can, block out some time in your week, weekly or your monthly time in your studio to just sit down and experiment with things. Don't worry about working on a project. Don't worry about writing a new song, but just sit down and twiddle knobs and experiment and see what works, what doesn't work. Try different things, try different sounds, try different plugins on tracks that you don't typically try those plugins on, take different pieces of hardware, put them on elements that you normally wouldn't, twist all the knobs, learn what your tools do. Because one thing that we all fall victim to, especially when you work mostly in the digital world, is there's so many options and there's so many choices and everybody's got a million plugins or a million this or a million that and we get so caught up in the next new shiny thing that we never take the time to really learn our tools and learn the capabilities of what we have. Um, so I encourage you to do that. I try to do that at least. Um, I'd say two or three days out of my month schedule, if possible. Sometimes I can do more, sometimes I can do less. This week, I happen to have a whole week between client projects where I said, I'm just gonna sit down and mess around. I'm just gonna try some things and not everything is gonna work and some things I might stumble upon and go, oh, that's really cool. Let me jot that down for my next project. I might try that thing. Um, and I thought I would share it with you. So that's what I wanted to do here with Easy Drummer 3. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. video. <laughs> Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the thanks button. And by the way, go out to uh, mixingmusicanalog.com because coming very soon, depending on when you're watching this video, it may be there already, there will be some mixing training courses uh, in the hybrid workflow. We're gonna be doing uh, mixing rock, mixing pop, mixing country, mixing jazz, mixing R&B, mixing metal, and probably more. We're gonna have some training courses available starting in the beginning, first quarter I'd say of 2023, and you'll have some really good in-depth training on how you work in this workflow with hardware console and DAW and a combination of plugins and hardware to do some really great things when it comes to mixing. So I hope you check out mixingmusicanalog.com. Stay tuned over there. And until the next video, I've been Dave with Mixing Music Analog and mixingmusicanalog.com. Thank you so very much for watching me today and I'll see you soon.